I've been a video editor for a long time, and it's taken me years to finally put together my perfectly functioning dream desk setup. So, of course, naturally, I had to stop and ask myself, how could I go and make this just a little bit cooler, but significantly worse? So I did. For an entire week, I replaced all of my tech with functioning electronic transformers devices. And, uh... The good news is this whole idea is basically just me living out my 12 year old dream. I've always been obsessed with transformers and the tech world, and this is conceptually the perfect hybrid between those two. The bad news is, well, I hate to be a dream killer for little Jared, but he might want to consider getting a new dream. It turns out there's a pretty decent amount of oddball exclusive transformers toys that also double as a functioning electronic device in their alternate modes. And yeah, I'd be lying if I didn't say that it hurt just a little bit, replacing most of my key desk tools with decade plus old items that function exactly like, well, like you'd expect. You don't realize just how much you miss your modern wireless mouse until, uh, you know, it's been replaced with a, a dinosaur. <laughs> uh, no, literally, it's a... It's a dinosaur. Actually, it's Trypticon, who is a massive city-sized Godzilla-type Decepticon that converts into a literal battle base. And also had a child, I guess. And that child is now on my desk, 24-7, replacing my Logitech MX Master 3. <laughs> I'll be fine. Oh, baby, it's wired. Gotta love that. This is the Transformers device label Dinosaur, aka Trypticon in the United States. Those Japanese names are a little on the nose. But I gotta say, the design of this is on point because this is actually a sweet looking optical mouse. It's kind of the best version of a gamer mouse without all the obnoxious neon LEDs everywhere. I probably shouldn't have said that. I'm coming for you! I'm coming for you! They really psych you out with this cable, make you think it's like a removable USB-A, but nope. It's just the tail extending. <laughs> the transformation is pretty satisfying, and it's strangely effective considering that his whole butt end had to pack a 2009 device into it. So yeah, he's just a scrawny little chicken, but I don't know, it's a smart form factor to design for the shape of a mouse. It's pretty clever. It's pretty nice plastic. I'm actually kind of surprised. Me too. That was literally the first thing I noticed. It makes me wish that they had used it on the uh, headphones. <laughs> yeah, true. So the thing about headphones is I am a little bit picky. I do quite a bit of audio mixing for work, but on top of that, these were said to have had pretty terrible sound in 2009 by casual listeners. All right, let's see what kind of sound I got to put up with for the next seven days. Oh. Introducing the Transformers music label Rumble and Frenzy. And honestly, I don't actually know what to call them because they're not earbuds, uh, but they're also not headphones because that would strongly imply that they wrap around, you know, your head. I was told that this was brand new, opened only once, but the toy was never actually pulled out of the package. But uh, when I cracked one of them open, one of the earphone cushions had turned to complete sawdust. These are like the uh, good old library headphones, remember those? Just if they were, you know, really expensive and <clears throat> a lot more painful to wear. But hey, they do transform. For those who may not know, classically speaking, these guys transform into little cassette tapes that are stored in Soundwave's chest since he was a cassette player. Ow. Oh, they hurt. But hey, whoa, it's 2007, forget that crap. This puppy is an MP3 player, top of the line, good enough to replace my current music player. Been at it already, had my tarot read. Things are looking up for me, that's what my tarot said. Go find me a snow bunny, ask if this cold world's making the nose runny, she melted. This is music label Soundwave, sold in the same 2007 Transformers line as, yeah, you guessed it, these guys. And he is an MP3 player. Although, you know, he is kind of technically an SD card player or micro SD card player. Sorry, no, mini SD card player. Wait, what? You don't know what that is? <laughs> Nerd. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> In short, mini SD cards were the middle sibling between the two SD cards that we still use today. I don't really know why I never took off. It seemed pretty reasonable, but it certainly did not. Not even in 2007. Nobody knew what this thing was. This is also one of the best looking Soundwave cassette player modes I've ever seen. They absolutely nailed this. And you know, in all fairness, he looks about as much like an MP3 player as he did a cassette player. I just think it's so funny that we've all gotten used to this, you know? Like we just accept that that's, that's a cassette player. That's not what a cassette player ever looked like in any world. I'm also pretty confident that this is the best looking robot mode a G1 styled Soundwave toy had ever seen in 2007. And his little minion hockey pucks don't look too bad either. Sure, it's a headphone with legs and arms sticking out, but I'm not really sure what else they were supposed to do with this. You could even say they look so cool. I was just itching to show them off. So what are you doing today? You're getting a haircut. What do you usually bring with you for a haircut? 
quick question. You ever looked at like a vlogger on YouTube and thought, I could do that? Seems pretty easy. Well, odds are, if you are a mostly normal person, you couldn't or you wouldn't. As a self-proclaimed resident sane person, I really don't get much of a kick out of people seeing me be one of, you know, those people. You can sit down next to me. I don't understand. It's all a little bit embarrassing, aside from the fact that there's a reason I stopped vlogging all those years ago. Gotta do this like the good old days back when I had wired headphones. Shove it under the shirt so it's super discreet, kind of, kind of cool, like. I think this is one of those things where it's like so retro, I could kind of bring it back. This can work, right? I can make this work. All right, onward. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying all vloggers are insufferable lunatics. It's just that kind of tough trying not to look like one of them. They're doing something to me. They sound so bad, but not like normal crappy headphones. There's something wrong about this signal. I black out, and when I come back, I have this horrible feeling that I've done something unforgivable. There's only one thing that might be able to stop it. Thank goodness for today's amazing channel sponsor, Status, and the best pair of earbuds I have ever owned, the Between 3 ANCs. Everyone looks at earbuds as the downgrade to headphones, but the fact is earbuds go deeper into your ear and have a greater potential for the listener. I say it's about time. Somebody stepped up to give us earbuds that meet this potential, and let me tell you, Status did it. The Between 3 ANCs look so sleek, have incredible battery life, and a genius secondary control button on each earpiece, but my favorite part is the completely customizable EQ settings within the mobile app, something I refuse to live without. Links for this incredible pair of earbuds are in the description, and thank you so much once again to Status for saving my life, uh, sponsoring this video. Oh, and uh, happy Halloween, guys. I'd like you to meet the Transformers device label Cheetahs. This is a repaint of the original version that was another Soundwave minion named Ravage. The thing is, these things are impossible to find. And I don't mean like they're tough to find cheap or new on eBay. I mean, they are literally non-existent. There's not a single one over the entirety of the internet used or expensive that I could find over months of searching. That was until last month when I randomly saw this guy pop up on my eBay recommended used. However, I lied. It turns out this is not actually from the official device label Transformers line, or so I'm now aware. After close inspection, I realized that it's a knockoff, which you would think would be obvious, and so would I, but I've now only recently learned that there's a specific breed of KO that's far less common and resembles the original a lot closer. I can't be too mad, because he still looks pretty good. Oh, there's also just one other teeny tiny little issue with this thing. It doesn't work. It doesn't even show up on my computer devices list, it's just uh, it's a dud. But, you know, he still looks great right? Why is it lopsided? All it had to do was be a rectangle. Speaking of rectangles, I'd love for you to meet my new phone. Well, kinda. In 2017, Infobar collaborated with Transformers to make a transforming mobile phone. This is one of the most recognizable mobile phone brands in Japan during the early 2000s, so naturally, it has to be Optimus Prime. What, you don't see the connection? It's probably because you have no creative vision. Oh, and this is one of the toughest toys I've ever had to hunt down online, mainly because there's barely any information of it, but I had to piece together on my own that there's the electronically functioning version and then the non-electronical version. My personal favorite part of all this is most US customers who got a copy didn't even seem to realize that there existed an electronic version. So shopping for new copies on eBay, they are not labeled to differentiate which version it is. It's so bizarre, even the Chinese sellers didn't label any of their electronic versions as such, so there was not even a price discrepancy. Luckily, I'm a very smart young man, and I finally figured out that the single difference between the two products lies in the electronic version, which has a tiny screw by the fake camera. And this is where the cell button battery goes. After connecting it to your iPhone's Bluetooth, he has this LED that'll light up once every time you get a notification. Nice.
Is it a bit anticlimactic? Sure, but it's still pretty cool. And it's a little bit useless considering that it only blinks once for each notification and then never again to remind you that there's still a notification. It also strikes me as odd that there's a second LED pocket on the top of the phone, but that's not a functioning light. And that's kind of dumb. I just wish it was. That would have made it a lot easier to see when it just blinks once and you don't want to miss it. So this is great because the rule I had was that I was only allowed to check my real phone if I saw a notification light on the info bar. I missed a lot of notifications this week. Like Soundwave, he functions exactly the same electronically when he's in robot mode, which is cool, but you just can't see the notification light unless the figures turn backwards. Why? 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 He's a pretty cool looking bot. Really lanky, I think unnecessarily so, but I don't know, it's just Optimus Prime. Not like he was ever a beefcake or anything, right? This version comes with a stand and the stand only functions to hold him in robot mode. Gotta admit, I spent way too long looking and it has virtually zero functioning purpose in his iconic phone mode. This definitely annoys me more than I like to admit, despite the fact that this guy is arguably the most flawed figure in the batch. I found myself actually having a lot of fun with it. I usually try and disconnect from my phone every couple months anyways, and I like the idea that I only got a limited amount of times to look at my phone whenever I happen to catch the info bar notifying me. I know I'm reaching here, but it would have been so cool to see a simple app that pairs with this to change some of the minimal settings like added notification sounds, how many times it blinked. Oh, and that second LED spot would have really come in clutch for choosing between some preset light patterns to catch your attention more. That would have been really cool. The biggest annoyance I hadn't even considered when getting some of these were the cables for whatever reason, it never dawned on me that none of them would be detachable, and messing around with them is not nearly as fun as you think when you gotta deal with those. Oh, oh, no. Uh. And that's particularly true with these good old ear clampers, which are probably the least creative engineering wise out of all of these. Yeah, it is kind of tough to see what else they could have done with the idea, which is why I think that they probably should have just made something else entirely. Like, I don't know, a single pair of normal headphones. I will not be missing these. This Trypticon mouse wins points for being by far the most useful out of everything here. It functions exactly how you'd expect a mouse to function even in 2023. On oh, his dyno mode, top tier. I love it. Soundwave simply looks the coolest in every single mode. If not for the crazy aftermarket price, he'd almost be worth getting just as a poseable action figure. It's mostly just cool knowing that he can be a working MP3 player if you want. And it goes without saying, of course, he's not actually that useful as one in practice. Good old Cheetus, buddy. He came from an abusive and dishonest household, so he may be broken inside, but he's cute and I will take care of him. Also, in my opinion, this is one of the best cat modes I've ever owned, so I don't mind much that he doesn't work. And as for Optimus Infobar, he's neat. And his mobile phone mode is really satisfying. I'm a very big fan of transforming rectangles, if you couldn't tell. I also feel really good about the fact that I got a brand new one with the rare electronic phone function for virtually the same price as one that didn't have it. But that function, it's pretty useless. I would know. I might have ruined a lot of relationships this week. I wouldn't actually recommend most of these for anyone to buy in 2023, but if I were to, it'd probably be Trypticon's little son. He's a goober. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go cuddle with my real phone while listening to music for the next three days straight. All right, later guys.